Are you fully engaged with the 2024 U.S. presidential election? If it is a yes, come on in, take a seat. If it is a no, just stay out of our circle. I don't really focus on anything on like digital. Learning. Do you think more high school teenager students should be following along with the presidential election? What matters to you more? Is it the personal characteristics or policy? Xin chào quý khán giả của Đài Little Saigon TV à, và cảm ơn quý khán giả đã trở lại với chương trình Passport to Success của Nhật Thành Công. Hôm nay mình sẽ đối thoại chung với các em tuổi teen à, ở bên trường trung học để có thể tìm hiểu thêm về cuộc bầu cử tổng thống bên nước Mỹ đây. During these election times, it can get very overwhelming and complicated for people due to the many different types of sources, the news, the information that they get, and it can be tough. But we want to remind everybody here, especially for the ones who are getting ready for the election season, it's that remember that your voice is so important. Whether you believe that you're just one person, um, you do have a strong, a big voice that can make things, make change happen in your community, in your city, in your state, across the country. Speaking of voices, you're going to hear some of our high school voices today. So let's go ahead and let's meet them. So welcome everybody. We brought our leadership people here today, our leadership students here today, because we want to talk about the presidential election. Just wanted to give you a couple of guidelines here. You definitely do not have to share whether who you're voting for, who you support. We want to kind of understand a little bit about what teenagers in America today think about when they think about the presidential election. Um, and so we're going to do like a little game, a little activity. Um, I'm going to pose a question for you. And whether you do agree with it, if it's a yes, I'm going to have you stay in the circle. And if it's a no, I'm going to have you take a step out. Um, but for my no people, don't worry about it. Once we kind of discuss it with our yes people, we'll bring you back in and then we'll talk a little bit more about that as well too. Okay, so come on out. So step out, step out. Okay. You guys can stay behind. Yeah, wherever you guys. You guys can move around too. You guys don't have to stay here. Okay. So your first question here, are you fully engaged with the 2024 US presidential election? Fully engaged means that you're paying attention to it. You're following along to it. If it is a yes, come on in, take a seat. If it is a no, just stay out of our circle at the moment. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, so um, you are currently involved or you're currently engaged with the U.S. presidential election. Okay, so um, why is that? Well, I have like multiple reasons. So the first one is I'm taking like government class right now. So AP government at Westminster High School. And so within like um, that class, we learn about like things about in the past, like the constitution, all that stuff. But we also learn and connect it to um, like the current state of like politics so um we connect the constitution up uh to what we're learning but also to current events to just further our knowledge about um what's happening in the world right now and specifically what's happening in my community and so that's one of the reasons the second reason is just i'm very interested in um politics so i want to major in either political science or international relations which both have to do with um the politics just within uh, the United States, but also like outside in, in the world. By staying up to date, I know like what is happening in my community as well as just like being like a good citizen. And then now can I please invite back everybody else who said no, that they are not following along with the US presidential election. All right, so we've already got a chance to hear Derek's and now let's hear from some of you all. As why do we here not are fully engaged and paying attention to the US presidential election? Personally, I'm not like engaged in it because I'm really busy like and I just there's other things I prioritize over politics. I think for me, I haven't exactly like been engaged with it because maybe for me like I'm not at the age of where I find it to be the most important thing for me. Yeah, like Maggie said, I'm like, I'm not even close to like the age where I'm able to vote. So I don't really pay that much attention to it and it's a lot to keep up with. Cause I don't really focus on anything on like digital or anything. So I don't really listen to much media. Do you think more high school teenager students 
should be following along with the presidential election during this high school students should be following along like also including us because like if you think about it even though we're not at the age of voting yet like the elections are still very important and as long as we keep on like continue to keep up with things then we'll understand all the policies and just how it all works so once we are at the age to vote then we'll know how it all works and what we want in a president Similarly to Maggie, I believe that students should know like the presidential election is going on, but I don't think they should like fully delve into the presidential election just because I feel like you only have like a couple years left of like childhood and just being like a teenager and a kid, but like you have many more years to like be an adult. And so I feel like being just like staying or knowing that it is happening but not like being so into it is a good thing just because for students like it's just another thing for us to worry about and i feel like in this current age we have like many things to worry about like for all of us asb and also our grades um our extracurriculars so i feel like having like having um a curiosity in politics is fine but um like having to like being in it too much is um a little bit like overboard and sometimes can even lead to like one being even controversial and so before we begin anything let's go ahead let's introduce ourselves hi my name is Derek Al Yoong uh, I'm a senior at Westminster High School I'm also the ASB prime minister so the ASB president I'm also involved in BACC where I'm the outreach coordinator my name is Davina I'm a ninth grader here at Westminster High School um, I'm not involved in too many clubs right now my name is Kaylin Tran and I'm a freshman here at Westminster High School I'm minister of rallies in ASB and I'm in the AVID program I'm Kamil Harrell I'm currently a ninth grader at Westminster High School Hi, my name is Mindy Trung and I'm a sophomore at Westminster High School and I'm also Vice President of Archery Club as well as a part of Deer Hut and Girls League. Can somebody here tell us what does ASB stand for? Um, ASB stands for Associated Student Body and basically our mission is to not only serve and um, represent the student body but we also plan to like give everlasting memories to the student body so we do, do this through many events and then we also host like different like celebrations and like overall events that gear towards like the student body as a whole and we also celebrate them through many like awards such as like achievements like student of the month athlete of the month so yeah we do all sorts of things regarding the student body so we're gonna have our next question here if i can have you all go ahead stand out stand up i'm gonna have you take a step out easy 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 okay so here is your next question here um eventually you'll get to the age where you're gonna be voting right you're gonna have to choose different types of candidates in your lifetime so what matters to you more okay uh is it the personal characteristics or could it be policies if you believe that personal characteristics matter more i'm gonna have you go ahead and take a seat inside Why do personal characteristics matter more when you are looking into maybe voting for somebody? I just think that someone who's genuine is um, a pretty good candidate for someone like leading, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of agree with what she says because when someone's going to be leading your country, um, I think that their policies do matter, but it's more about who they are as a person. Can I have go ahead the ones who believe that policies are more important? Go ahead, step on it. So for me, I value policies a little bit more than character just because I feel like policies like are directly affecting like the citizens as well as me. And so not to say that character doesn't matter, I feel like they both equally like have their own time and like own like measurement of like what is important. But for me personally, I feel like policies are like more valuable for me to see like whether or not like I like a candidate or not. And then after I know their policies, then character is like what matters most because um, I feel like I want a person to rep represent like me in like a, the best light possible and so um, again policies matter first but then I think character just, like follows that afterwards and policies are what hook me but I think feel like character is what um, makes like keeps me like 
continue supporting yeah. them. Yeah, continue supporting them. Here is your next question. Do you know how the Electoral College works? And it's Derek. <laughs> so I think policies is more important because policies determine like everyone's future. And like Derek said, character is also important, but someone's character isn't like a direct source that changes, you know, like people's lives. Like the policies presidents make directly like makes things happen meanwhile someone may be genuine but they might not like actually do that some sort of like action to help the people yeah and to add on it just kind of matters on how they affect us not how they like act towards us mainly the benefits they bring with them so for my ones who had chosen characteristics what characteristic do you think is important in a leader. I don't know like the word for it, but someone who does what they say instead of just saying it, I think that's a pretty important characteristic in a leader. Um, I think someone who really, who is really honest and also responsible. And like Davina said, that like um, actually goes forward with the things that they say. So be like being proactive, right? Someone who is proactive will take initiative to take on the task. Okay, and then for my policy people, what policy is important to you? Policies I would like to see is just like, policies that help things like student loan debt or like student tuition, because in my honest opinion, I don't think student education should cost like a whole salary. And it's just like things like, also like women's rights. I feel like, you know, people shouldn't have laws that decide what women can do with their bodies. I feel like policies that like help uplift people and like just give people like or citizens like a better life and just like an ability to just live how they want to. I feel like that's um, a policy or policies that are like centered around that are like what I support most because um, there's like a bunch of different like um, policies that like are very political or very like po uh, like polarized and I don't really want to add my two cents on that just because I don't really have like the knowledge or the um, information to back that up but I just do agree that um, what with what Maggie and Kaylin said that policies that uh, end up uplifting people and uh, giving them more rights is what um, are policies that I would like to support. For my people who had chosen characteristics first, right? Policy, um, any policies that you would like to see for any of our future leaders? Um, mainly just what everyone said, um, just policies that will make sure everyone has equal rights and uplift everyone. And then how about my policy people, characteristics, standout characteristics in a leader? I think having empathy is very important because um, as, as president, you don't represent one party, you represent both parties and you represent like the whole United States. And in order to do your job effectively, you have to understand people and be willing to just negotiate and be like a diplomatic person. And so having empathy helps you become a great president because it you understand people and you are willing to work with them. And um, having that, having a president that has empathy is something that's really important to me. I'd say like dedication to like towards the people and to like act out what they would do just to benefit them. So I agree with Derek on what he said, like having like a president or just a leader in general who has empathy is good because it's one thing to be like very firm on your beliefs, but it's also another thing to just be understanding of everyone else's views and opinions and to be able to just like like not exactly agree like you don't have to agree but you can just listen to them all right thank you so much if i can have you all go ahead stand on up i'm gonna have you take a step out for our next question here is your next question do you know how the electoral college works and it's Derek. <laughs> All right, Derek. So I know that 
you're currently a student in government right now too, right? If you can give us a little um, info of what is the Electoral College from a teenager high school student point of view. The Electoral College, it's like a way of voting in the United States to keep um, like represent representation equally and fair. And so what I learned in government class was that um, the Electoral College works differently than the popular vote because the popular vote is like what gives everybody one vote while um, the Electoral College gives states um, a different amount of votes. And so I feel like the Electoral College keeps um, represents not only the minority, but also the majority. Um, and But the popular vote does not. And so I feel like having the Electoral College just protects like everybody's right, but also it gives like um, the president, whoever wins uh, the, the election, um, the, a clear um, like representation of what the um, all Americans want, not just a select few. Have you all learned about Electoral College when it came to elementary school, middle school, or your parents? Did anybody teach you or share to you about the Electoral College from I know people? I haven't heard of it until today. Until today? Okay. okay. Same as Maggie, I've never heard of it. Until and Derek, let's check in. Did you learn about it? Like, did people teach you growing up, or is it literally just the sheer government that you learned about it? So I come from a household that isn't very polite like into politics. The first time I ever heard of Electoral College or just politics in general was through like the news or like um, social media outlets. And that was like around middle school time. And in eighth grade, I think we learned about a little bit about US history. So I learned a little bit about like the Electoral College as well. And so from before I even went to high school, I learned all my like politics stuff. Just to pose a scenario for you all, um, in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but still lost the election to Mr. Trump because she lost the Electoral College. Because of this, some people have um, a bit of a disagreement about this system. Do you believe that this is a system that we should continue uh, with the Electoral College? Or do you think that maybe we should have the popularity vote? I feel like for me, I feel that the electoral college has some has a lot of merit to it, um, although it gets tricky sometimes and it gets um, like messy. Like in the 20, 2016 election, I feel like we should still keep it just because it is in the constitution and it's like what the framers always intended it to be. And um, it the electoral college like it helps smaller states as well as just big states in general, like it helps everybody feel represented. And so if we take away the electoral college, it feels like we're like disregarding um, the opinions and the values of like smaller states when we can have the electoral college and we have both, um, both the majority and the minorities feel represented. Good point. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. and that's okay. And definitely, hopefully, that you, that eventually, when you guys start taking government as well too, that you can learn about it more, or like how Derek mentioned it too, it's piecing things by little by little, right? Yeah. So you learn it today, don't worry, that's good. It's better than nothing at all. All right, let's go ahead, let's move on to our next question. I'm gonna have you guys step on out of our circle. So you go back. Littered with misinformation. Would you rather follow a mainstream media or an independent media? Cool. Okay, so. Polls are a snapshot of how people were feeling at a particular moment in time. Do you trust them in helping us determine the next U.S. president? If you think polls are helpful you can take a seat inside if you don't think they are I'm gonna have you just stand on outside at the moment <laughs> Olivia, okay okay that's okay here let's have let's go ahead let's get everybody come back in let's discuss <laughs> okay so it seems like um, everybody here does do not believe that polls should be used to determine the next US president why shouldn't we trust polls when it comes to determining the next U.S. president. I just feel like polls, because it's public to everyone, right? I just feel like depending on where it's coming from, like the media it's coming from, 
like news channels i just feel like it might just not be credible enough and if anything a lot of people could probably bypass like security measures and like get bots to like put in fake votes in the polls and everyone will just be spread with misinformation of what the majority thinks i also think there's like better factors than polls to determine like the next president like i just feel like 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 policies and stuff you know and the characteristics like i think that's like a better factor to consider for polls it's hard to be unbiased because like a poll is like what you believe it's not really like um it's just really hard to be unbiased and i feel like that um when the election results come out like based on like the electoral college i feel like then and there that's when we will know like who the president is we shouldn't judge it based on like polls thing and it's also hard to frame polls in a way that is not biased because um it's just like the creator who's making it and there's no like fact checking with the um polls but like for the like election itself like when you're voting there's like multiple like security stuff and like um things that ha you have to bypass in order to actually vote hey have you guys stand on up in 2022, a Times Technology reporter, Tiffany Su, explored how teachers are helping students navigate a media landscape littered with misinformation. Would you rather follow a mainstream media or an independent media? If you believe that um, you are, you would rather follow a mainstream media, I'm going to have you go ahead and take a step inside and an independent, just hold on for me for a moment. So go ahead. Cool. Okay. So, so mainstream media. Okay. Um, why? And if you are comfortable enough with sharing what type of mainstream media you follow. Mainstream media is just like a good place for everyone or like it's just an easy place and accessible place for everyone to get information about politics and stuff. Though I am aware that some of the information that is like spread out isn't um, like factual. So while mainstream is a good source to get information, it's still important to like fact check everything just to make sure that everything is credible. I feel like mainstream media, like for instance, like CNN, um, SN, S, MSNBC, all those news outlets, they have already credibility to their name. And so it's their job to like sort of, sometimes they like mess up but most of the time they do stay like neutral and it's their objective to stay neutral so i feel like um in that sense it's um we can tr like most people can trust them since they have a big following behind them if they do get um if they do get something wrong or they slightly twist information um they have we have people who can like like call them out for it and that way it just everything stays factual because for instance if you have independent very small um, news outlets um, they aren't going they aren't going to reach out to as many people and so that so not many people can actually fact check them or actually listen to them and so having like bigger news outlets so bigger news outlets they have um, fact checkers within their like um, company and their outlet to um, rely on rather than just like uh, independent news outlet and we don't really know who's in their team or not. So uh, just to piggyback on your some of your responses, um, why do you think that there are people who follow those independent media, even though, like we said, credibility, there is some sort of credibility fact checking that's happening. Um, but why do some people still choose to go with the independent? I mean, maybe those um, independent ones have like a belief that the person also believes in independent sources they might have opinions that maybe the mainstream platforms like don't exactly share out the most because um they both probably would have like different algorithms and obviously the independent ones would probably have a lesser audience with just like lesser content that'll get spread out so i just feel like independent sources have a more like different views on things. I do have another question as well too. So um, during this time and age, TikTok, right? TikTok is a big thing. I have to agree. I always see students on TikTok, uh, whether it's in the morning, during class, after school, it's it's a big thing, right? Do you, would you consider TikTok as a 
type of mainstream media or would it be an independent media? I feel like it de really depends because TikTok itself, I feel like it's already a news outlet, but once you're in TikTok and you're looking at the, your like feed and like the accounts that you interact with, I feel like if they're individual, as in like one person runs that account or um, like just a group, then um, you would consider it like an independent and not really like mainstream. But then there are TikTok accounts that are like ran by corporations and outlets such as like CNN, and MSNBC, and those. Um, those are still like mainstream media, mainstream media like accounts because like they still are being fact checked. They still have credibility. They are still posting what they post on the news, but instead, you know, like a shorter, like a minute span video. So I mean, I think that TikTok is just a platform with a bunch of mainstream and independent um, sources. So maybe it's just both. All right. So. Um it's good that you all mentioned about the mainstream, about the media, all of that stuff, right? Because yes, there has to be some sort of credibility. Just as a little tip that you can definitely share with other people around you, but there's a teacher who encourages um, students to remember this acronym, which is SIFT. So S-I-F-T. Um, each of the letters represent something when it comes to these kind of media sources, right? So S stands for stop. S stands for stop. I is investigate the source. F is find better coverage, and T is trace claims, quotes, and media to the original context. Please stand on up. <laughs> almost there, almost there, almost there. This is like double the crumble cookies for Derek now. <laughs> Last question here. So, is your political belief similar to your parents or guardians? For this question here, um, yes, you're going to step on in, uh, no, you're going to stay on out at the moment and just please understand as well too, we are not asking you to share um, what beliefs they are. You don't have to share too much about it. Um, you share as comfortable as you are. Okay. So again, the question is, is your political belief similar to your parents or guardians? Okay, Davina. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, so like we mentioned for this one, you don't have to share exactly what political beliefs they are. Um, but if you can kind of generally give an idea or what are some of the commonalities. This is more about my brother. Um, I we're really kind of similar in a way. So like we kind of think like we kind of believe in this mm -hmm. thing so i that's i guess that's that contributes to what we believe who should be mm -hmm. leading our country do you guys um share a lot of things or is it more of like uh, a lot of the things that he gets he relays it back to you i, I listen mm -hmm. to him and mm -hmm. but then i like make up my own like, yeah. beliefs on it so you're still kind of filtering out some of the things, but it's very similar. It's very similar. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's, it's similar. Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing. Anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Thank you, Davina. And then go ahead. Can I please get my people who are a nose come back in? Các em học sinh thân mến, các em có sẵn sàng để nâng các kỹ năng của mình lên mức cao hơn chưa? Hãy sẵn sàng đi, bởi vì học khu trung học Huntington Beach đang bổ sung thêm các lớp giáo dục kỹ thuật nghề hay CTE trong niên học tới. Cho dù em thích về kỹ thuật, y tế, kinh doanh hay các ngành nghề khác đều sẽ có lớp ưa thích cho mỗi người. Các lớp CTE được thiết kế để cho học sinh có trải nghiệm thực tế trong đời sống. Hãy tận dụng cơ hội này để phát triển các kỹ năng đáng giá, giúp các em chuẩn bị cho sự thành công. Các lớp CTE sẽ khác nhau tùy vào các trường trong học khu. Em nhớ hỏi chuyên gia hướng dẫn của mình để xem các lớp nào được dạy ở trường em. Đừng bỏ mất cơ hội này để khám phá về các đam mê và tiềm năng của mình. Ok. Awesome. Well, you're back in. Uh, we'll leave it as an open discussion. So again, you share what you're comfortable with, letting us know. How so? How are your beliefs different and not similar to your parents or guardians or the people in your life? My beliefs, because for my family, they don't talk about politics to me just because they believe that like 
I'm not at the appropriate age to know their like business or like their opinions on politics. And so I don't really know their opinions on it. Therefore, I can't really say that it's the same or different. So, but I do believe that maybe once I am older that they will give me advice rather than, you know, like their opinion and what they believe in and what a president should be doing for our country. For me, it's pretty much the same. Like my parents don't really talk about po politics to me. So I can't really say that I have the same opinion as them. But yeah, I think in the future they will give me insight on what I should look for in a president but I don't think they'll be too pushy about it. For me, it's also the same because they don't really want it to be the most important thing in my life at, right now. And they just want me to focus on other things before I like actually have to like, worry about choosing a president for the country. And stuff. Yeah, I feel like for me, my parents, they kind of raise me and my siblings to like think for ourselves and like just think independently and not be swayed by like other people or traditions of ours and so I feel like um, I don't really know I well I feel like I know that they don't politics is not something that they're like specialists in and so I feel like um, I, I don't really like know or get to like hear from them what they think and I just think that also um, I do want to major in some sort of like politics or like work in the community. I feel like um, they trust me to like think for myself and just like um, not let how they think influence. influence me. But like obviously they're going to have like um, they're going to put in their two cents and um, I'm grateful for their two cents and like their advice. But I feel like they trust me enough to just like make my own decisions because they know that I know best for myself. So um, just as a follow-up question, do you think as, so you guys are all high schoolers, teenagers, right? Do you think that there is a certain age where parents can openly discuss to their kids about politics? Is it like a certain age? Uh, maybe there shouldn't be like an age thing. It's more like maturity and like how they handle it. Sabina said, like, I feel like there's no certain age where someone or like when a parent can determine just when um, someone is ready to have an open conversation about politics and all that. It kind of just depends on like how their family works and what they've all been through in order to have that conversation. Do you think that kids should talk to their parents if they are curious or should they independently do research? I feel like kids they do have the right to just ask a question but i feel like it's the parents responsibility to make sure that they're not like forcing their child to a certain belief and that they should have an open conversation where it's just like factual evidence and just like just to let the kid understand what's going on i think it really depends on like your family dynamic and like what your family like is routine to but I think it's also important for like a student or like a young child to have student agency which is basically like their willingness to like learn and like their curiosity and like like how like how they're willing to learn and so I feel like it's important for the student to like look um, for information whether that be the internet but also I feel like um, your parents is also like a good safe spot to like um, talk about um, certain aspects. Obviously not every family is um, the ideal type, but I feel like looking to their internet and then um, talk, just having small discussions is um, totally okay too. Adding on to the whole like just asking questions in general, I feel like kids or just everyone in general should be asking questions and questioning how things work and all that because questions lead to like new information and knowledge and you should be aware of like what's going on around you and maybe like once you're old enough or when when you're ready like to just get an idea of what you want to do in order to like help a cause or something okay ready when you turn 18 Will you be voting? Just raise your hands. Who's voting when they turn 18? Awesome. And did you know that in California, you can pre-register to vote at 16 and then you vote at 18? 
So there you go, okay? So start earlier than later. If there are any final thoughts, comments, okay so that is it and this is the last time i'm going to ask you to stand on up goodbye thank you so much thank you thank you thank you, guys. Thank you. <gasps> he has crumble just kidding crumble crumble